Our main goal in this video is to change the original module into the used one uh, using the programming tools. In order for you to program the module, you will need to find the used module that got the same exact part number as the original. This is going to be a long video, and we will show you exactly what you need to do to program this module to the car. First of, first of all, you gotta make sure you have a battery charger so you can uh, connect it to the car and while you'll be doing your programming, uh, you will not have any battery spike, I mean uh, voltage spikes, yeah, so you gotta make sure the negative is connected to the negative and positive is connected to the positive. Uh, that way you will not have any outages during the programming stage, yeah, like I already mentioned. we. Um, uh, need to make sure that we got we we're receiving a constant proper voltage We set the charging voltage to 12 to 12 volts and then um, and the other knob to the continuous charge that way um, If you're using the same system as us you can see if the battery is still uh, charging if it's um, Good to go if we we can start the engine we can see it right there in the output um, uh, Ampere charge Right, so we will need the Phillips and the T15 screwdriver. So the first thing you want to do is you want to pop the hood. To pop the hood, you need to pay attention to two of the locks, uh, so that way you'll, you'll be able to open the uh, hood completely. We got two locks on the hood. You'll need to put the hood just a little bit down so you can open the lock. Once you're opening the lock on one side, you can then pull the hood up. You'll need to do it on both uh, sides. So that way you can pull the hood completely up. Now, once you'll put it all the way up, you'll hear this clicking sound and that's when it's gonna stop. So our main goal right now is the ECM. Let's take care of it. So the ECM in this car is located right there on the passenger side once in the engine bay on the passenger side once you open the hood there is this plastic cover and it got a couple of screws uh, that uh, you'll need to uh, take out so that way you can take out the plastic cover and then disconnect the ECM meanwhile while you will be trying to take out the ECM we also want to uh, have access uh, to the programming system in the car so we'll need to remove this plastic cover and then uh, we got this uh, connector where we'll be connecting our uh, programming tool. All right, it's located right there. All what we need to do is just um, take it off like a simple <laughs> bottle of water. 
There you go. Right, so you would want to connect it, uh, the small connector to the small connector on the Mercedes tool. It got a small red mark, which is located right there. Okay, right there. We need to make sure we are connecting it properly. A lot of people, uh, when they're trying to connect it, they either break the, um, uh, the connectors on the inside or they, you know, they they just don't know how to connect it so watch out for that it's a small detail but but it's really helpful same thing with a big connector it got a red mark right there and it also got a small square uh, which is inside of the um, connector right there we'll need to connect it just like that we see it small part right there right there that goes towards the red line just like that you connect it lock it gotta make sure the proper connector goes even into the computer you don't want to put it into another connector gotta make sure that it's all right it's proper it's secure this is how you secure it you just plug it in and then you gotta turn the head and that's it we see that uh, the star diag uh, communicated right away uh, by looking at that lamp after a successful connection of a star diag to the car we want to open the star diag application which is called Zentry and once you'll be there just go ahead and press the F2 three times Here we see what type of um, um, car we can choose, uh, this particular one it's a Mercedes S-Class S500 W140, okay, so it belongs to the cars category, that's what we will choose. We can also choose bus, truck, transporter, B-Class, Unimog, Smart, Poton and so on and so on, but we need cars for now, so let's choose that. You can press the F3 or the checkmark button and it's gonna take us to this note. You're gonna need to press the F2. And here we can choose the vehicle by the VIN. Um, we got the A, A class, B class, C class, C class, S class, CL, my back. We need to choose the S class. Right here it gives you all type of variations of the S class 221 to 20, 140, you know 216 to 15. We need the 140. This is W140. This is a gasoline engine, so we're gonna choose gasoline. Press on the F3. This menu right here is the actual menu uh, um, for the diagnosis. When it opens up, this is what you'll see. You can test out the gasoline engine and see what's going on with the uh, with the gasoline engine. Chases, body, climate control, or sure test result for a quick diagnostics. We want to test out the car completely and properly. So uh, what we need to do is we need to turn the ignition on. You're not starting the car. You're just turning the ignition on um, because we have the battery connected. It will not dry out the battery because um, it's charging. OK, and we will take as much time as we need because for everyone is different. Sometimes it make uh, 30 minutes, sometimes an hour, two, three hours. It all depends on the person. Right, so this check mark right here means that uh, everything is fine with the, with the engine in particular. Uh, the F on the other hand means that there is some type of problem. Uh, there might be two variations of the Fs. We got the big F right here and there is a smaller F and they indicate, well the big F indicates that there is a big problem, the F one indicates that there is a small problem. Um, we this video is made specifically for the ECM, the engine computer, so we'll go into the gasoline engine. We do not care about the rest um, of the codes on the chases and so on.
this is the menu for the engine control module we can test we you know we can see what type of control unit it is and uh, that's what we'll do right now what we want to do is we can go ahead and click on enter okay and we got a mercedes benz number which means that that's that's our part number that we got okay um the control unit is fine everything is good to go with it the part number is right there a0215452032 0215452032 it matches it and we can also see its hardware status software diagnosis and and in general the information about the module that we need let's move on now here we see the coding number and the coding unit number engine transmission and version this information maybe someone else needs it this is just an additional info to add on to the system to see what's going on So the next thing that we want to do is we want to check out the fault uh, fault codes and see if there are any. So now we'll check out and see if we got any current faults. And once we'll open it, we'll see that there is none because we already checked out this computer ahead of time. No fault presence. That's in current faults. Now we can go down to the stored faults and see if it's able to see something in there. And nope, it, everything is clear as well. So no faults stored. So the first thing that we have noticed is that uh, once you were once you started the car the rpms would not move anywhere um it's just it would just sit there and that's it at 10,000 rpms once you press on that throttle there is no nothing going on at all you, you feel like pressing on the pedal you want to start it and it's not doing anything we want to see how that looks like on our diagnostic systems, okay? So we'll turn the car off and go check out uh, the um, diagnostics. See what is doing over there. So after you clicked on the actual values, we got a couple of um, menu, I mean, we got a couple of items opening up. <clears throat> we got the test idle speed, test engine, cold start, warming up, driving, cruise control, drive authorization, smooth engine running, test performed. We want to click on test idle speed and see what it's doing over there. It says fault and PC, diagnostics multiplier. We're gonna continue. I want to exit out of that. I'm going to go to actual values and test the idle speed. Close throttle recognition is on. Lambda control stream of TWC right left at both 0%. Coolant temperature at 49 degrees Celsius. We are starting the car right now and then we'll press on the throttle to see what it's doing, if, if there are any values that are changing on the diagnostics. Right, so we see that it's not really showing any signs of um, the fact that you're pressing on the gas pedal. We know for sure this is a problem with the ECM. This is what we're gonna program. Now the fun part begins, the actual programming phase of the uh, module for the car.
Right, so we're going to drive authorization. I'm gonna click on that. That's an engine control module compatible, yeah. Engine control module identification, yeah. And then the engine control module interlocks, no. Let's move on. Start enabled, yes. Of course, the car is starting. Car locked with DAS. No, it's not locked with DAS, okay? Starting operations if engine control module not interlocked. Number 26. This 26 right here means that you can only start this car using this module 26 times. And then you will need to change it. Right, so we go to actual values and then we need to go down to the functions and in the functions we press the uh, CMD adapter and then version coding. And, um, what we want to do is we want to read and perform the coding, see uh, what are the values over there. Right, so coding number we got it as um, that right there, you know. Pretty much from this point on, it's all self-explanatory. Just follow the instructions that you see on, on the screen, on our screen and on your screen as well, okay? <laughs> right. So it says replace old control module with a new control module. That's what you have to do. Take out the old control module, put in the new one. That's it, switch the ignition to on. Don't start the car, switch the ignition to on. Right, so this is the module right here that we need to change. Mm. By the way, keep in mind that ECU team also offers the unlocked modules, which means that we will prepare for programming the actual module and then you'll be the one to program it. Right, so after the after you change the, the module, you're coming back to the same screen that says replace the old control module with the new control module. And then switch the ignition to on. That's what we'll do right now. This is going to be your first step to programming a new module that you have put into the car.
now we want to see how the engine will run with a new module installed and programmed. Now what we are doing is we're rechecking, making sure that the replacement module that we got, got 100% data transferred, right? We can see it by looking at the um, star diag, of course, we can still uh, read the current faults, stored faults, see if, if we got any at all. And we shouldn't get any because it was a 100% cloning. And matter of fact, you now just performed programming of this module all by yourself. So congratulations on that. All what you need to do now is just put everything back, uh, the plastic cars on top of the car rings. Um, now we're just checking in the actual values uh, to see that the software of this car allows us to start it, right? Thank you very much for watching. Subscribe to our YouTube channel. And I'll see you in the next video. We are now plugging back in the original module to see if it will work on the car. We do know that it, it is working. Once we start the car and press on the throttle, let's see how, how the car will react. That was the original module that had a problem in it it still doesn't want to show any throttle response once you press on the uh, throttle so now we'll replace the module with a module that we programmed and test that one out we already know that it works based on the video that you're watching <laughs>